proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Our story is entitled, Some Must Watch. This is the story of how an airman discovered the full significance and responsibility of his work. Our curtain in a moment. But first, here's important news for all ex-servicemen. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force at a higher grade and at higher pay than you realize. Yes, the Air Force has a new policy that offers big new benefits to veterans of all the armed forces. The Air Force needs men who are experienced in critical skills required to keep America's air defense strong. If you have training in these skills, the Air Force wants you, and they'll put you right on the job. For full details, write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter right away. Ask him for the folder for prior servicemen. You will see how you can put your service gain skills to work to your best advantage. Remember, you've earned credits toward a fine retirement in the service, so protect your initial investment as an airman. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now your Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, Some Must Watch. Oh, pardon me, has this seat been taken? Yeah, by you, just now. Oh, <laughs> forward, I mean, wasn't it? <laughs> Not if you don't mind riding backward. Well, I, I know where I'm going, so I don't mind watching where I've been. <laughs> Here, let me help you with that bag. Oh, thanks. Hey, that's pretty heavy. You yeah. must be planning to stay a while. Anyway, up to 30 years. I'm in the Air Force, just reporting into Lackland Air Force Base for basic training. My name's Cronin, Andy Cronin. Well, my name is Monroe, Ralph Monroe. I want to congratulate you on your choice of service, Andy. I'm an old Air Force man myself. Oh? You, uh, gonna be a jet jockey, I suppose? Well, I, I don't know. I... I'd like that, I guess. But there are a lot of interesting jobs in the Air Force today. Oh, that's true. That's true. Every one is an education in itself. But they all boil down to the same thing. What's that? See that little girl down in the car there, Andy? The one sleeping on her mother's lap? That's the one. You ever stop to think that there has to be someone watching so she can sleep? Her mother? No. You. Me? You. A lot of scientists at Oak Ridge. Airmen in Texas, Okinawa, Greenland, places you've never heard of yet. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. Look, a little girl smiling in her sleep. You know that she's not dreaming about her mother lying in the ashes of their bombed-out home. Well, you sound as though you've come across kids that have had some pretty bad dreams. I have. Korea? That's right. See, I was over there with the Air Force. When a man sees what war does to kids, he wants to devote his life to seeing that it never happens to his own. And I have four, two boys and two girls. Well, that sounds like a big project. <laughs> it is. And for me, it all started at a wrecked airfield outside a little village in Korea. A ghost village. Can't remember its name, but that's not important as long as I remember what happened there. See, the UN ground forces were moving north, pushing the communists back. And we followed right along with them, reactivating captured airfields. The communists had left this particular field in their usual mess, but our outfit was used to that sort of thing. Okay, make it real pretty now. Hiya, Fred. How are things shaping up? Fine. How are you coming? Oh, by tomorrow morning, this place will operate like Mitchell. Those airways and air communication system boys work fast, don't they? Seems to me you said the same thing in a nicer way last week when they gave you the message saying you were the father of an eight-pound boy. <laughs> Look, my wife, not AACS, gets credit for that. Sergeant Monroe, Sergeant Bailey? Yes, sir. Yes, Colonel Briggs? Sergeant Davis returned from reconnaissance yet? I saw him drive off with Corporal Chang, the Korean interpreter, about uh, two hours ago, Colonel. Now let me know as soon as he gets back. Yes, sir. Well, from the looks of things, I'd say the commies don't expect to be coming back this way soon. Well, they certainly wrecked the place, didn't they, Colonel? Yeah, but we seem to have interrupted them before they could blow up those two hangars. 
I want you two to check around in there and see what facilities there are that the maintenance section could use. Right away, sir. Oh, here comes Sergeant Davis now, Colonel. Uh, Sergeant Davis! Over here! Yes, sir. Has the area been cleared? Yes, sir. The commies are running north as fast as they're able with our aircraft chewing on them all the way. Good. Uh, tell the radio section to notify wing headquarters that we'll be in business by tomorrow morning at the very latest. Yes, sir. And while you're about it, tell them to ask Wing to send a C-54 with food for the people in the village down there. Lots of rice, kumchi, the usual things. Red's probably cleaned the place out, as they always do. Colonel, I, uh, I'm afraid that won't be necessary. What do you mean, afraid? Well, sir, we just came back from looking over the village, and, uh... Yeah, and? Well, I suppose the people who live there must have been anti-communists. You mean all the people in the village? Are... Uh-huh. Now, there are a couple of kids foraging in the ruins, but they ran when they saw us coming. Corporal Chang says the communists tell them we feed them poison and use them for germ warfare experiments. You know, I was reading the letters to the editor in a back copy of my hometown newspaper yesterday. A man wanted to know why his tax money was being used to buy planes to fight over here. He signed it Father of Three. Did he get an answer? No. I suppose the editor figured he answered it himself when he signed the letter. Is there anything else, sir? Yes, I want the radio section to tell Wing to have combat cargo rush fuel, bombs, rockets, napalm, anything we can throw at or drop on the communists. I want this field operational in an hour. Yes, sir. Can we do it, men? We'll do it, sir. It's only difficult, Colonel. We're used to doing the impossible. Only in Korea, Indochina, or Hungary that such things can happen. A person never really thinks much about it until he sees it in a place like Korea. And for the first time, it suddenly hits him. He says to himself, that could just as easily be my hometown and my family. We had that field ready to operate in an hour, all right. That was easy. All we had to do was to look across the burned out rice fields to that village and nothing could slow us down. By late afternoon, the jets were using our field as a base, penetrating deeper into the enemy lines and staying longer than they'd been able to before. Towards evening, combat cargo started bringing in the maintenance men and their equipment. So Sergeant Fred Bailey and I started out to find a home for them in one of the hangars. They sure cleaned out this hangar, didn't they? Uh, we'll have it filled again before dark. You, you think it's safe? Oh, yeah, yeah. The security boys have been all over it. Some commie goofed and left us a nice little maintenance shot. There's a sliding crane down there at the other end. Yeah, it looks, looks in pretty good shape, too. Tell you what, let's move the whole maintenance section into this hangar tonight. We can set up... What's that? Yeah, I heard that, too. Wait a second. Somebody under that workbench over there. You see it move? Yeah. Looks like one of the commies didn't run fast enough. I'd love to get my hands on him. Look, you move around that way. And when I give the signal, we'll rush him from both sides. Right. Now. All right, right watch it, buddy. I'll try it. What the... Do I'll be a... If you won't, I will. Look at the way he's cowering under there. He's scared silly. What's your name, boy? Young Sick. How do you know? All Korean kids are named Young Sick. No, no, don't, don't be scared, Young. We're friends. Dong Moodle, Im Ni Da. Ooh, that didn't seem to inspire much. Uh, come here, young. Let me pick you up. <laughs> oh, he's light as an armful of nothing, Fred. I bet he hasn't eaten in a week. Wonder how old he is. About seven, I'd say. Oh, poor kid. He's shaking so hard I can hardly hold him. He's probably cold as well as scared. Will you look at these rags he's wearing? Are you cold, young? You hungry? No ha. Say os me ka. Hmm? <laughs> Oh, what's the matter? What's the matter? Can't you talk? Oh, or... send him home to his mother. What else? Oh, he doesn't have a home or mother. You forget what happened down in the village. I didn't forget. I just don't want to remember. Well, I do. For the rest of my life. Look, Fred, last week I became the father of a baby boy. I never want this to happen to my son. Which brings us back to your question. What are we going to do with him? Why don't we just keep him here on the field, adopt him as a sort of a mascot? What? <laughs> I wonder what the colonel would say to that. Well, there's only one way to find out, I suppose. The colonel was a family man, so it was no trouble getting his approval to rehabilitate Jung Seek. I took over with Sergeants Wayne Davis and Fred Bailey as sort of assistant guardians. There's only one thing wrong. 
It's always been my opinion that the mission in life for small boys is to get under your feet, on your back, and in your hair. They yell, they explore, experiment, and they eat too much. But not young Seek. Never had a word to say, and the only time that I saw his expression change in those first three weeks was from blank to quiet resignation when the flight surgeon gave him a vaccination. Resign. Resign. That's the way it was about everything. And then one day, while we were giving him a bath, and the tub cut out of an old... <laughs> you know what gets me is why he doesn't put on yeah, weight boy. faster. <laughs> hey, I tell you, that kid yeah, eats hey, more than I come do. Come on, turn around, young. Mm -hmm. uh, come on. Dolora, say o c c o. That's it. <laughs> he takes a lot of chow time, but you know, I think he stashes it like a squirrel. You ever notice how he takes a little bit of everything and then fills his pocket? Well, well that's natural enough. He's shy. Besides, people who've been starving always hoard food until they get used to the idea that there's enough. Yeah, and another thing, what does he do with all the clothes we give him? You know, that's the third set I've cut down for him in two weeks. Ah, but you sew such a fine seam. Fine seam. <laughs> you should taste my cherry pie. You know, you know, I think he does have a touch of squirrel in him. Probably has a little pile of clothing and stale food somewhere. He disappears a couple of times a day to add to it. You missed a spot. Where? Right there. Yeah. That's the base of his spine. Oh, it's not dirt, you dummy. That's his Mongolian spot. Is which? Mongolian spot. All kids in the Orient have one. It's an anthropological phenomenon. Oh, sorry I mentioned it. Sergeant Monroe! Yeah, over here. <laughs> Colonel Briggs wants to see you. All right, thank you. Hey, you go ahead. Fred and I'll take over. Okay, but don't try to wash that spot off. It's part of him. Come in. You wanted to see me, sir? Uh, yes, I did, Sergeant. Sit down. Thank you, sir. How are you doing with that Korean boy? Well, he's still pretty much withdrawn, sir. He's passive and he submits to whatever we want to do for him, but we think we'll have his confidence pretty soon. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me, Sergeant, uh, does he seem to have the uh, taking ways? Oh, no, sir, nothing like that. I mean, he's a little careless. He loses clothes, soap, that sort of thing. Well, I've been reluctant to tell you this until I was sure, but I'm afraid Jung Seek is suspect. How do you mean, Colonel? I know how fond you've grown of the boy in the three weeks you've been taking care of him, but war does bad things to children. May I ask what it is Jung is suspected of doing, Colonel? We're convinced that Jung Seek has taken advantage of his position here to steal government property. But why would he do that, sir? I'm sorry, Sergeant, but I'm afraid your little friend is a juvenile black marketeer. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Some Must Watch. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Here's something we want every veteran to know about. The United States Air Force needs men who are skilled in so-called critical jobs, jobs that keep America's air defense strong. And for that reason, new opportunities, new benefits are now available to veterans who re-enlist in the Air Force. A wider range of skills is now accepted with a choice of U.S. and overseas assignments. What's more, qualified men can be guaranteed technical training in a critical skill. On the basis of aptitude testing, this guarantee can be made even before you re-enlist. The Air Force has other important advantages for you, too. A paid 30-day delay in reporting if requested, a more favorable conversion list for all veterans, especially men with technical experience and know-how. There's also a new grade policy in effect, plus new rules on eligibility. So if you're a veteran of any service, contact your nearest Air Force recruiter now. Remember, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Some Must Watch. <laughs> When the colonel told me that Jung was suspected of being a black marketeer, I knew it couldn't be true. Of course, Jung had the run of the field all day and at night slept in his own room in our barracks right behind the main hangar. He'd had plenty of opportunities to pick up a lot of government property if he wanted to. But even if he had, I didn't see how a little fella like that could carry it past the perimeter guards. It just couldn't be true, and that's what I told him. I appreciate your feelings in this matter, Sergeant Monroe. I know you've become attached to the boy, and so have we all. But there's no mistake. I think we'd better send him to the orphanage at Cheyu Island. It's a fine place there. They'll take good care of him. I know they would, sir, but I'd like an opportunity to clear Young. Could you tell me what he's suspected of taking? 
Well, I've had Lieutenant Carbon to prepare a list of missing articles that Young Seek either had in his possession at one time or was permitted access to. Why do you mean, sir? All the men are trying to spoil the boy into smiling. He never does, as you know. So they let him browse in and out of the billeting office personal equipment and the base supply stores as he pleases. Yes, I know that, sir. Uh, well, apparently you didn't know that after he does his browsing, the inventories come out short. But he's only a child, sir. The war robs children of their childhood, Sergeant. Well, maybe Young did take a few things, Colonel, but not for the black market. A Young isn't that kind of a kid. Well, this is a pretty strong indictment, Sergeant. I'd be happy if you could prove it was just, well, carelessness by locating these articles. However, I believe Cheyu Island is the only answer. Colonel, Colonel, I see in Young the possibility of my own son seven years from now. He needs someone to belong to, someone to look out for him, and I'd like to be that someone as long as necessary. And how will you know when you're no longer necessary? I figured that out too, sir. As soon as he's got a smile on his face, even when he's sleeping. Well, you're due to rotate in a few months. I'd let Young Seek stay until then if he could be cleared. If not, we'll send him on to Cheyu Island. That might be better for him anyway. How long do I have, sir? Oh, let's say 48 hours. I thank you, Colonel. Hey, Pete, read that list of missing articles again, will you? Uh, three Air Force issue blankets, two pillars, four sheets, two flashlights, two cartons, flashlight batteries, one flight thermos jug, one flight jacket, one aircraft first aid kit, one ream of bond paper, three fountain pens, and assorted toilet articles. Wow, sounds like Young is trying to start his own Air Force, doesn't it? Yeah. The colonel has a point. That list does smack of commercial. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. If Young took those things, you can bet next month's pay they're still somewhere on this airfield. And I'm on your side, Pete. Hey, he's too nice a kid to be operating in the black market. Well, I'll make it unanimous. Now all we have to do is find everything on the list. You know, it's, it's that list that convinces me Young is clean. Well, how do you mean? Well, look at, look at what articles are missing. Bedding, flashlights, all the rest of those things. Yeah, well, what about it? Well, there are a lot of other things that are more negotiable on the black market. Cigarettes, penicillin. Hey, hey, you're right about that. Yeah, but that still doesn't explain where these things went. Oh, he took them, all right. Young's a squirrel, you remember? Yeah. Well, we got 47 more hours to find where he hides his acorns. Might take longer than that, so let's clear him on this black market wrap first. Well, I know how to do that. Look. We'll get the colonel's permission to sign out some penicillin, see, and other medicine from the base surgeon. And we'll pile them on a couple of cartons of cigarettes. Then we'll put the bait where Young can't miss it. Hey, that's a good idea. Yeah, where'll that be? Uh, let's see, Young is always loafing around the main hangar. Let's put it in there where one of the mechanics can keep an eye on it. Oh, Kurt Matson's there all day. He can be our lookout. Well, that's our first step, then. Look, if Young springs the trap... We know he's been traveling in mighty bad company. I'll round up the bait and plant it. We'll meet in the hangar just before retreat and get the good Airman Matson's report. Roger. Over and out. Matson! Hey, Matson! He can't hear you. Shut off the power. Anything happened, Matson? Was yeah. Young here? Oh, hi, Sergeant Monroe. Yeah, he's been in and out all afternoon. How about the loot? Did he take it? No, I checked every time he left and still there. Well, how many times was he here, for God's sake? You know, it's funny. He's here, you look up a couple of seconds later, and he isn't. A few minutes later, he is, and then he isn't. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who's on first? Well, you'd better take that pile of bait out of here now. I'm uh, just about to wash up for dinner. All right, is it still in the same place? Yeah, yeah, it's on the workbench. Yeah, I'll get it for you. Hey, it's gone. What? You're kidding. What are you talking about? It's still there. No, I mean my midget battery radio. It was right here on the well, bench. Don't worry. We'll get it back for you. Just don't leave any B batteries laying around in the meantime. Where's Young now? Uh, oh, uh, last time I saw him, he was heading toward the dining hall. Okay, after he finishes eating dinner and filling his pockets, we'll tail him. Well, he's pretty shrewd. What if he sees us following him? We'll stay right here in the hangar where we can watch the dining hall door. When he comes out, we'll give him a big lead. Well, that should work. Do you think he'll lead us to the hiding place? He'd better. We've only got 43 hours left to locate that pile of government property. Yeah, and my midget radio. Fellas, this was very poor planning. We should have eaten first and then followed them. All you can think of is your stomach. Quiet, quiet, quiet. The young's coming out of the dining hall now. Yeah, he's a sly one, all right. Look, look. He's looking around to make sure no one's following him. Hey, look out. He's turning this way. Yeah, he's coming right towards the hangar. Quick, behind these engine crates. Here he comes. What? He's heading right for that same workman. Doc, he's checking for followers again. It's pretty quiet. What's he doing now? Why do I peek? Well, I'll be 
What's the matter? He disappeared. He what? Where he disappeared to? Where else but to the same place all those things on the list disappeared. Come on. Where we ducked, he was standing right here. It's almost as though he went through the wall. Yeah, that's what he did, all right. Look under the bench. There's a sliding door in the wall. Yeah. There's probably storage space in there. That must be where Young was trying to hide from us that day, but we moved in too fast. You better let him know the game's up, Pete. Young! Come on out! Na a sip co. Hey, that did it. Here he comes. Come on, young boy. Na a sip co. Look out! Pete! 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 Come on, Pete! Pull him off! Ow! Hey, my shin! Well, young! Grab him, somebody! Come on! Come on now, young! Yeah, I've got him! Ow, Grab his feet! Quick, quick! Yeah. Yeah. There. Whoa. Boy. Yeah, that was... Come on, now, you two hold him. I'm going to see where that sliding door leads. Take it easy, young. Uncle Sam just wants his belongings back. Yeah, sure, sure. That's right, young. We'll buy you an Air Force do-it-yourself kit at the post exchange. Hey, you're lucky starting to cry. He's never done that before. Oh, now, cut it, cut it. Look, I'd rather he'd fight. Wait, wait, come on in. Well, what do we do with young? He'll be all right now. Bring him along. Go ahead, Young. You lead the way. Ow! Well, tuck your head, you tummy. What was that? Never mind. Just keep moving. Come on, now, don't, don't try to stand up or you'll bump your heads again. What kind of a cubby hole is this? Uh, storage space for broom stand cleaning equipment. Here, take a flashlight. Well, well, well. There everything is, all right. Have you taken inventory? No, but it's probably all here and more. Hey, hey. Yeah, Matson's radio, for instance. Hey, look, there's my kabuki doll. That cost me 10,000 yen in Tokyo. I wondered what had happened to it. Say, will you look at these pictures, young Drew? <laughs> the kids got talent. They're terrific. Terrifying, you mean? Ruined houses, fires, and explosions. Besides, Jung didn't draw them. Well, who did then? That's the artist there, lying in the corner on the pillars. Where? Well, I'll be. Another one? Tells me her name is Suni, and a good guess would be that she's Jung's kid sister. What's she doing here? Hiding from the nasty UN troops, that's what. You mean she's been hiding here all the time? Why not? She's got fine Air Force bedding, new cut-down clothing, direct flashlight lighting, paper and pens to draw pictures while she listens to the radio. <laughs> she had it made. Yeah, young certainly put one over on us, didn't he? Yeah, big joke. Sure is. For some reason, I don't feel like laughing. That's right, young. You go ahead and cry. I feel the same way. <laughs> That seems to be everything. Yeah, except for the bond paper and the used flashlight batteries. I'll have Lieutenant Carpenter make out a statement of charges against me for those. That won't be necessary, Sergeant. Those items are expendable. There's only one thing that bothers me. How did Jung know about that cubby hole in the first place? Well, according to Corporal Chang, the Korean interpreter, the communists had conscripted the villagers to do their dirty work. Jung used to help his mother sweep the hangar floor. Mm -hmm. Where are the children now? Last time I saw them, they were heading happily toward the post exchange. <laughs> to the candy counter, I suppose, huh? Excuse me, Sergeant. This is Colonel Briggs. Uh, just a moment, I'll get a pencil. All right, go ahead. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, how many brushes? Mm-hmm. Watercolors. I see. Yeah, I think I've got it all. Thank you. Sergeant Monroe. Yes, sir. The post-exchange officer has just presented me with this list of articles missing from the art supply department. Here we go again. <laughs> from the moment Jung saw that we wouldn't harm his sister, he opened up and became just as ornery as any other seven-year-old. We loved every second of it. Yeah, poor kids. Well, that sort of thing can happen to kids when the people they have to depend on aren't ready to protect them. Well, I'm glad I had this talk with you. You know, your story made me realize a lot of things I never thought of before. Only people who have freedom take it for granted. San Antonio, San Antonio. Oh, I better get my bag down. It's where I get off. Now, don't rush away. This is my station, too. Well, then maybe you can tell me how to get to Lackland Air Base. Well, there's an Air Force bus to the base, but my family is meeting me. We can give you a lift. Oh, there's my family now. They see me. And look at the kids waving. Oh, those are your four children? Yeah, yeah, reading from left to right. That's Peter, Junior, Young Seek, Suni, and that's Nancy, my wife Elizabeth is holding. <laughs> look, Nancy couldn't wait. She fell asleep. <laughs> With a smile on her face. Yeah, and I'm going to keep it there. Come on, we'll give you that lift to the base. Oh, no, I don't want to take you and your family out of the way, Mr. Monroe. You won't. We live there. And it's not Mr. Monroe. It's Master Sergeant Monroe. I'm stationed there, too. You mean you're still in the Air Force? Certainly. 
That's my big project I was telling you about. You know, some must watch while some must sleep. Thus runs the world away. <laughs> Attention, all former servicemen. Now is the time to get the full facts about the liberalized Air Force prior service program. Your local United States Air Force recruiter has a booklet which personally analyzes your opportunities as an airman in today's Air Force. For example, if you are skilled in a needed job, you may be surprised at the grade and assignment option which the Air Force will offer you. If you don't have such a skill, you'll be given an aptitude test. This will determine whether you qualify for guaranteed technical training. An Air Force career will give you a guaranteed annual wage with extra allowances, 30 days paid vacation every year, and up to $2,000 for re-enlistments during your career. This is only part of the story. Your local Air Force recruiter has all the facts. Ask him for a personalized copy of the prior service booklet and see why, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>